Hezbollah and Iran have an incredibly close, intimate relationship. Not only because Iran created Hezbollah in the first instance uh, back in the early 1980s, it has developed over time from a relationship between a state sponsor and a proxy to a strategic partnership. U.S. intelligence officials now describe this strategic partnership uh, as being close enough so that when Iran asks Hezbollah to go and bomb Israeli tourists worldwide, from Bulgaria to Cyprus to Thailand and elsewhere, Hezbollah is willing to do it, even though doing so has nothing to do with Hezbollah as a Lebanese actor. It is not in the Lebanese interest. Hezbollah is willing to do things today that would put Lebanon at risk if that's what Iran wants. That's how close the relationship is. One cannot understand Hezbollah without taking into account the relationship with Iran. Hezbollah has been involved in criminal activities since its inception. Uh, everything from credit card fraud and other types of schemes and frauds to now money laundering and not producing but transferring uh, narcotics around the world. Uh, you have a huge increase today in Hezbollah criminal activity because it's diversifying its economic foundation. It gets a tremendous amount of money from Iran, but it doesn't want that to be the only source of its funding. The biggest development today is Hezbollah's involvement in the movement of drugs from South America across the 10th parallel, what we call Highway 10, to Africa and then up into Europe and to the Middle East. And of course, this gets the attention of European countries if not for the fact that it's Hezbollah that's doing it, at least for the fact that they're moving drugs into Europe. So far, only the Netherlands has banned Hezbollah as an organization, and the United Kingdom has banned Hezbollah's terrorist and military wings. Because of that, Hezbollah has long felt and continues to feel that Europe is a place where it can operate with impunity. It is able to raise money here, just like the Red Cross. It is not a banned entity. It is able to travel here and do logistical operations here, and as we've now seen in Cyprus and Bulgaria, uh, carry out operations in Europe. It also recruits people here. There have been cases in Germany, in Denmark, elsewhere. Of the, SUS, of the, of the operatives that were recently caught in Thailand and one in Cyprus, two of those individuals were both Swedish citizens. It's imperative that there be a designation of Hezbollah not only to make Europe a place where Hezbollah cannot act with impunity, but also as a shot across the bow to inform Hezbollah that they must make a choice between their overt activities, being a political party, which they are, being a social welfare provider in Lebanon, which they are, on the one hand, and killing people and engaging in criminal activity on the other, which they cannot. They cannot be allowed to do those expressly illegal things, drugs, crime, murder, and get away with it only because they also do politics and charity. It is incumbent on the European Union, as the leader of the international community, to force that decision on Hezbollah. And if the European Union, uh, as a member of the Quartet, for example, is serious about pursuing Middle East peace, they need to not only do everything they can to support the peace process, they need to do everything they can to oppose those that are trying to undermine the peace process.